the joint United Nations program on a HIV and AIDS set a goal to eliminate or eradicate um, HIV. Hey, I'm Ryan O, you're watching The Daily BA, and this is my new installment called Why Context Matters. We're gonna pick apart the little things and show how it's never just one thing, but it's a mix of everything coming together. Today I welcome on Forrest Tagle, member of the research team at the Center for Learning and Health, where he shares what the team's been working on in the area of HIV. To do that, they need to get people, they call it the 90-90-90 plan. So of all the people who have HIV, 90% of them should know that they have it. 90% of those people who know that they have it should get enrolled into um, uh, treatment, mm -hmm. and then 90% of those people who are enrolled in treatment uh, should maintain what they call an undetectable HIV viral load. So that is where uh, you know viral load is is the concentration of HIV in your blood. So if you get if you can decrease the concentration of HIV down to a certain number of copies per milliliter. Uh, some people it's around 200 copies per milliliter, but you know it's less uh, depending on what your goal is. But anyways, if you can uh, reduce the, the concentration far enough, then you eliminate the ability to transmit HIV to other people, uh, you know, even through unsafe sex. Mm -hmm. um, and the person who's taking it who reduces HIV, the concentrations enough, um, they don't have the same, the same consequences that other people can suffer from. It's just, so it's, it's good for the person and it's good for the community. So they came up with this plan, 90-90-90. Uh, they can eliminate, eliminate HIV by 2030. Lofty, but achievable. You know, this is like, you know, a dream, right? Um, but that's one of the cool things about behavior analysis is that if we can get our hands on something that work, that like is possible to work, mm -hmm. we can make that work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, what I, that's my experience so far. So the clinical trial that just wrapped up evaluated if Delivering incentives contingent upon viral suppression can reduce the amount, the concentration of blood in, or HIV in individuals' blood um, to the extent that it's undetectable, you know, relative to the standard care for the people. Um, so when they brought people in, well, first they met with uh, people who are actually like experts in HIV and AIDS because uh, they, they didn't really know much about it going into it, um, except that it was a problem and a problem yeah. that should be solved. Uh, so they met with uh, an expert, Robert Silicano, here at Johns Hopkins, and uh, and he helped them determine like, okay, well, if you were if we're going to reinforce reductions in viral load, what kind of reductions could we expect? Assuming we can get people to take their medications, I don't think I even talked about medications yet. Let me tell you a little bit about the medications. Um, they're abbreviated to ART, uh, they're antiretroviral medications, and so by by taking these medications, that's how you can reduce the viral load. Um, and, uh, and he told them that if people are taking the, uh, the ART consistently, that's at least 90% of whatever doses per week, then you should expect a reduction of about 0.15 log, uh, so about 30% mm -hmm. reduction in concentration per week. Uh, and so they said, okay, well, we'll put a contingency on them. They, everyone got the standard HIV treatment, mm -hmm. uh, but then with, or, and everyone also was paid to get their um, blood tested to, okay. so we could identify the concentrations. Um, and then half the people were put in the incentive group where uh, we delivered incentives up to $10 per day since the last time they were tested. So if you come in on a Monday and you're undetectable and you come in the next Monday, that's 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they got $10 per day um, since the last time they were tested. Yeah. Uh, and they got it if either they had a reduction in their concentrations by 0.15 log units uh, in or per week since their last test, um, or if they decreased it to a thousand copies per milliliter, um, if there was any reduction at all since the gradients of reduction get, uh, they, they change when you get down to um, a thousand unit or a thousand copies. And then um, you could, they could also earn it if they uh, have an undetectable viral load, which was defined as 200 copies per milliliter of blood. 
and so uh, they continued this for two years and so the paper they published uh, in January was on the first year of the, of, of the treatment. Um, but we, or they, I don't, yeah. I don't know how to say it, with, you know, since I'm a newbie, but, uh, but uh, they uh, effectively and significantly increased the number of people who had an undetectable viral load. Not just, and I'm, I don't mean just like initiated a viral load, but like initiated and maintained it. Uh, it's incredible. A lot of the people, nah, I don't have the, no, I don't have the graphs in front of me. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of the people um, had at least one uh, sample where they were undetectable. A lot of people in the incentive group. Yeah. About, if I remember correctly, it's something like a quarter of the people in the um, control group had at least one undetectable viral load yeah. um, in the first year. But in the incentive group, many, many people yeah. did. Um, and a lot of those people had it for the entire year, cool. which is kind of a big deal because there's a recent paper that uh, showed that just because someone has an undetectable viral load at one assessment, uh, they're unlikely, you know, that doesn't predict their, their upcoming assessments uh, very well. You know, we've got people, I mean, people already developed the technology for ART, for the antiretroviral medication, right? And, and what was missing was what to get people to take it with enough consistency that the goal could be reached. It's kind of cool to think about, like, all, a lot of these big problems that, you know, nobody wants to tackle because they're just so giant and there might never be things to do about it. You know, some of the research that they're doing here is, uh, is able to... Yeah. Chip away at yeah, I was gonna say it's just like the slow chip away, right? Yeah, that's what science is. Yeah. Understanding the next little aspect, next one, next one, next one. That's your daily BA. Hey, if you enjoyed this, you're gonna enjoy the series that's over here. And if you have time, this is funded by patrons. Click the top link down below to learn more about how you can support the vision and what I'm trying to build here. <laughs>